provide after the meeting after lunch. So remember, it's 15 more minutes, and then I'll let you have some food. So, um, just to keep you all updated, this is a short uh, summary of what we submitted as a report from the working package on education. That, for those that don't remember, is a transversal one going through all the different uh, modules. Uh, and at the same time, it's uh, a rather huge project because it is not that well defined. In fact, it includes training, education and training. So, this is a reminder of the different goals. We realized in month 12 that we were in advance for month um, 14 or whatever because the initial report was rejected by the Commission because they wanted a full educational frame to be presented at 12 months. So, we tried to say this and we explained that this was not possible. But anyway, here you have an idea of what this working package is supposed to cover. Um, so, there was a group uh, uh, that was created with links with existing um, groups or task forces, mainly of the ELAE, um, for the, um, uh, to prepare this. And there were one or two more or less private discussions. There was no real uh, teleconference or email exchanges about it. And then from this, the first step was an assessment that was done to find out what the 28 centers of Epicare are already organizing either themselves or that they are aware of in their own countries. <coughs> it was not easy, but with the help of uh, Judith and Ellen, we finally got the 28 answers. The last one was from the from London, from Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not her fault. I'm doing Oh, I didn't see you, otherwise I wouldn't say it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, now, there, is, there was an inherent difficulty in this survey and the most <coughs> interesting example was the one from what we received from our German colleagues because it is very difficult to know do we include these teaching courses or working groups or whatever that exclusively work on rare and complex epilepsies? Do we include everything within which we can also find rare and complex epilepsies? So, the answers were quite variable to these questions, but it was a first step, and it, allows us, it allowed us to have a global idea of what's going on. Probably important teaching courses or workshops or training courses are still missing from that survey, but we will clean it up, we will circulate it to all of you, and then you can, again, complete accordingly to what it is. So, this is what went into the report. <coughs> And this is the first conclusion, epilepsy being a highly complex multidisciplinary pathology related to a great number of neurological and genetic disorders in both children and adults, most of the educational courses in fact combine teaching sessions of both the fundamentals of epilepsy diagnosis and care and sessions on rare and complex epilepsy. My opinion is that this will remain as such, it will be unavoidably the same. The other, of course, issue is that this is one of the rare fields that because of the national contributions, we have teaching courses in different languages and not only reports in, uh, mainly in English. Uh, of course, the international courses are all delivered uh, mainly in English. Now, there is an issue that maybe this afternoon can be commented. This is arbitrary for an educational course or workshop to be endorsed, at least 50% <coughs> of the sessions must be related to rare and complex epilepsy. Now, it is totally arbitrary, the 50%, but maybe we should discuss it. Should, it. should we include such a criterion? Because the problem is not with the courses organized by us. The problem is that if this come, becomes open and people ask for endorsement, we need to have some kind of criteria before. Otherwise, if they are not established, the only possible answer would be with a little help from my friends, 
and we put, if we endorse those that I like or, or someone else likes, which is not the good way of doing it. Please. I think it's a real problem that we have to define what we regard as a rare epilepsy. So, for example, if you look into orphanet, for example, epilepsy based on hippocampal sclerosis is one of the diagnoses here. So if you are very open-minded and take all these patients who are less frequent than patients with hippocampal sclerosis, then practically every teaching on epilepsy will include more than 50% on any of these diseases. So yes. we probably have to define exactly what we want to call where in this sense of this particular education. You're absolutely right. It needs to be discussed. On the other hand, to take your example, if I was asked for children, I would put it definitely in rare disorders, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's not that easy. <laughs> Please. I, I would just like to comment uh, a bit like Rita did for the impact. Mm -hmm. that, that this is very different for big and small countries. Yeah, yeah. So in small countries, we will have comprehensive courses where we, uh, where we include the rare and complex approaches. And, and it would be a pity if they would be excluded because of this. Oh, no, we... we we don't plan to exclude anybody. It will be more inclusive than exclusive, but we need to have some kind of criteria, and I fully understand this. Uh... Now, the other issue that, because you are all here, may I ask you to do the work and try and obtain for you the courses you are organizing and CME credits. The processes may be complicated at the beginning, but it helps. And as we are discussing about the European Union, it is important to have CME credits whenever they are applicable, of course. Now, um, there was a list of seminars that are already on the website. Here are some of the examples. But you see, for example, the Stereo EEG course, by definition, is within the rare and complex epilepsies because we don't do Stereo EEG to every patient that has epilepsy. And there are, of course, other courses that are organized by the different uh, centers. These are, these are just examples that I have put up there. <coughs> but uh, others can be on, on the list. <coughs> now, I raised on the report this issue that funding of participants remains an issue in the sense that our institutions usually do not fund participation of younger students to these courses. And the money comes either from the European Commission of uh, the Commission of European Affairs of the ELAE, or from uh, the EAN, or from the EPNS, but they do not come neither from Europe nor from our institutions, and I think that this needs to be said and known. The same applies to the training facilities. There was a, a, a proposal to try and look which of the centers provide training facilities, most of the centers, again, do not dispose of a specific budget to financially support sending uh, someone um, in another European center, European reference center for training. And uh, again, this was uh, highlighted. We will organize, with the collaboration of the European Commission of the ELAE, a survey on existing facilities and mentoring capacities of the Epicare centers, we will send you another survey within the next months to find out what you can do. Finally, what is in the report is this. Um, we participate as an ERN at the European Joint Program on Rare Diseases between other aspects, also on the educational aspect. I am trying to understand what's going on, to be honest. Uh, but we are in link with them. There were already three or four teleconferences that I participated to try to find out how Epicare can contribute to specific working packages that uh, are within the European Joint Project. Now, the next steps. As I said, uh, there will be this survey on uh, uh, collaboration with, uh, in collaboration with the ILAE to better identify specific educational needs. This time it's the need. It's not what we provide, but what we need per country and or within the European Union in the field of rare and complex epilepsies. Nicola is assuring the link with the ELI Commission of European Affairs and other members are Sandor Egan are here, so it is quite easy. It will be done jointly. And now the last, and these are the two last slides, or three, but they are very rapid one after the other. 
the main challenge was this famous educational frame. Now, there is a huge amount of work already ongoing with the ILAE centrally, which is chaired by Ingmar Blumke, and within which there is a working group who is working on a body of knowledge project to become an epileptologist at different levels, level one basic up to high level. <coughs> Within this group, chaired by Ingmar, there are at least four Europeans, Ingmar, Sander, Gunther, and myself, who are, who are already working on this. And as it was said several times this morning, we are, don't intend to reinvent the wheel for e education. We will integrate the global ELIE project and use this and eventually adapt it at different countries. So I use this as an example. This is already the work that was done by this group. Of course, it's not yet validated by the EIA, so I just give it here as an example, because the, pro the, the work is ongoing. As you can see, we already created at least six major modules, diagnosis, counseling, pharmacological treatment, epilepsy surgery, emergencies, comorbidities, biology. Each of these modules have subtopics, and you end up adding it by having more than 100 modules of education that starts from the basic and goes to the highly specific. Now, you don't be, need to be afraid because this will take one or two years, so most of you are told to go to the modules, but <laughs> the, the, the next generation will have to go through this process. Um, and the examples here are this of this kind demonstrate whom, when, and how to genetic testing should be applied, and then you see it breaks down to sub-modules, or counseling is a very important part, communicate information about the causes and consequences of a specific type of epilepsy to the patients, to the families, educate the patients, <coughs> and so on. Another module, demonstrate up-to-date knowledge about special aspects of pharmacological treatment, and then again it goes into details, or demonstrate working knowledge of advanced techniques for pre-surgical evaluation, and so on. This will be level. You don't need to do everything. You need to do parts, and according, you can be at level A or B or maybe C. We are still discussing. Now, so this will be done together with the ILIA, as I said, and in parallel, there is again work from the ILIA to which members of the Epicare participate, and if some of you are interested, it could also be a good idea. <coughs> At the initiative of the ILIA, we are reviewing, uh, led by Gunder Kramer as an editor, all the Wikipedia entries related to epilepsy. So, and in collaboration with the Wikipedia administration, this is official. This means that for the patients, for the families, or for Google doctors around the world, they will find in there a lot of information. So it is extremely important to link the two. And that was the last comment that I have put in even before the comment from Keith half a minute ago. I think that these are examples, instead of trying to educate for each syndrome with a small number of patients, I mean now for the larger public, and for the doctors that are not highly specialized, we need first to do the, the umbrella as it was proposed uh, in earlier today by, by Keith to link the, the patient approach to this educational problem. Thank you.
for a professor uh, Rodrigo Rocamora. I Rocamora Zuniga for being a survey superstar. And, uh, <laughs> We have talked about money, I think, in a, oh, in a yeah. So he is always the first. First to complete everything. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Have a good lunch.